let's hang here for just a second on some stuff that happened today, and, and let's get into Bam some. Uh, I'm looking at the final box score, and, and we, we probably should have cataloged this a little bit for you. Tatum ended up with 29 on 11 of 16 shooting with five rebounds and six assists. It didn't feel like that. Now, no Jalen Brown today, uh, and we knew that that would be a factor. But, of course, Evan Fournier still thinks he's in Orlando against the Heat, and he had 30 with eight assists. So <laughs> I guess that was predictable. They got 16 in 19 minutes from Aaron Nesmith. So um, they did get some contributions from others. Tatum was a minus 14 on the game. But looking at the Heat, Jimmy, 26, 8, and 11, 9 of 14 shooting. So he ended up going 8 of 13 in the second half. Um, I said that Jimmy and Bam needed to combine for 30 field goal attempts and 15 free throws. They got the free throws. They got 19 free throws. They made uh, 17 of them. Bam was 10 of 11, Jimmy 7 of 8. Um, and they were 14 of 19 combined from the field, but Bam had only five shots, six rebounds, including a big one late. I, I thought that one where he had, had his arm pinned at his hip and he had the offensive rebound, three assists, two steals. Evaluate Bam's game. Oh man, he's so damn lucky that they didn't come back and lose this game because it would have been the loudest noises ever. And me, you know, obviously you, everyone knows I love Bam Adebayo. He's probably my favorite player in the league. And um, I would say this, that uh, in a game where the offense was so spread out, you know, as I've mentioned before, you had six players who had a dozen or more points and, and kind of, there was also um you really had three point shooters going. I mean, Duncan Robinson was six of 10, Goran Dragic, three of five, Tyler Hero, two of three. So at that point, like with him, uh, I think that he's five of five. So he was efficient and he still scored 20 and he still, you know, they, they find, they found a way to win with him doing what he did. So I don't know how many uh, holes I'm going to poke, but to your point, like this is the kind of game where had it gone in the other direction, I don't think anybody would be talking about anything else other than five field goal attempts. Yeah. I mean, 20 points on five field goal attempts, like in most situations, you'd be like, that's great. Um, I, I, but there's a deeper stat here too. I mean, and again, plus minus single game sample size can be overrated. We know that, but Bam is pretty much an even player this year in terms of that. It, it's weird. And, and, and even, and that was even the case when the heat didn't have a reliable backup center behind him. And, and I'm looking here, bam tonight, 33 minutes or today minus three Deadman, 15 minutes plus nine. Um, that's not to suggest that Deadman is a better player than bam. I, it is amazing though. If you look at their numbers combined, they combined to shoot eight of eight from the field. Right. Uh, they, they, they made all eight of their shots. They combined for 11, 26 points and 11 rebounds. Um, Denman had a couple assists, Bam had three, so that's five, two steals between them, both for Bam, one block, one, which was from Denman. I mean, you'll take these numbers anytime, but it, it, it does seem at times like when the heat shooters are going that Bam and Jimmy can get lost a little bit, but Jimmy finds his way to reassert himself in the game. So in other words, at that point where kind of what you knew what was going to happen, which is in the third, they would give up a run. Boston's done this to a lot of teams. We know that the heat allows a lot of teams to do this. Boston would get the heat would give up a run and you'd end up in a situation where, you know, those shots weren't falling. Some of the shots like that hero pull up that looked so good. Didn't look so damn good at that point. Right. And, and the other guy, none wasn't really, you know, in, involved in the offense as much. And, and that Jimmy would find a way to get himself back going into the game. Like when he needed to press the accelerator, he would. With Bam, I don't feel like that. Like I feel like either Bam is aggressive early or you're not getting it. Like he's, yeah. if he's not aggressive he's so early, you're getting a, a five to seven shot game, right? Like, and, and I think that's Heat fans frustration. They want him to do what Jimmy does and it, it's just not in him yet. Yeah, no, and, and there's definitely some truth to that. I mean, just for perspective, though, he hasn't had a single-digit field goal game since, um, you know, at least in the last 15 games, as I'm just glancing through here. But I'll just say this about Bam's game. Um, and we used to talk a lot about this with Dwayne, and, and I know, Ethan, I probably actually got it from you, is we would talk about, like, the sign of a great player and a great scorer and a guy who can lead a team is that some nights when you're off, mm -hmm. you are able to still get your points – because you could get to the free throw line 11 to 16 times. You know what I mean? Like that was a Dwayne staple and like Bam hasn't necessarily arrived in that place at all today. He got there 10 of 11, but I would just say that if Bam can find a way to use free throws as a springboard to get more aggressive and not be five of five, because it shows that he was 
like anything he did was working. So do mm -hmm. more of it. Like, I think that that's just the maturation process that we're watching unfold and we want it to happen sooner. Luckily today, he let free throws uh, supplement his offense in a way that most stars and all stars can do. And you just, but he doesn't do that every night. So like, but right. today, you know, he got it done and they got the victory. All right. We are going to get to where they go from here. What happens uh, the rest of this week. Before we do, though, I want to tell you about another great sponsor, Five Reasons Sports Network. That's our friend Mark Brown. You can find him at markbrownpa.com. He can handle your estate planning for you. He can handle your real estate litigation and transactions, both commercial and residential. This is a law firm in North Lauderdale, just north of Cypress Creek, off of Andrews. Uh, with full service attorney owned title company in house, which is really helpful for you. Here's the thing you mentioned five reasons. You get the same $295 closing fee that I got when I just sold my condo here in Lauderdale. So $295 closing fee on all refinances, on all purchases. When mentioning five reasons, just got to mention it to anybody there in the office. They handle evictions for both landlords and tenants, so both sides of it, and they offer flat fee evictions. So estate planning, which is something that you definitely need. I know a lot of our listeners are young fathers, certainly something you don't want to take care of uh, for your kids and for your family as we kind of speak to you on Mother's Day. MarkBrownPA.com, Mark Brown, that's M-A-R-C, BrownPA.com, 954-566-5678. That's 954-566-5678, MarkBrownPA.com, and huge Miami sports fan. All right, let's look ahead a little bit. They've got some time now. Now, no game on Monday. We'll come to you with a podcast. I'm planning on actually having Jared Greenberg from NBA TV on the pod tomorrow, so we'll mix it up a little uh, with someone from the national space. Jared's been on with us before um, Tuesday night. So again, it's, it's more than, I mean, it's more than 48 hours. They, they get a little bit of time to kind of rest in Boston, chill out a little bit. Uh, it's a night game, which as we know, Jimmy prefers. There were some minutes played today, um, Jimmy in particular, but I, I feel like he's ready for this at this stage of the season. You look at the minutes today, uh, Bam played 33. <laughs> I tweeted in the first quarter. This looks like a 40 minute Jimmy Butler game. It was a 40-minute Jimmy Butler game. 36 minutes for Ariza, 34 for Duncan Robinson. We haven't talked about enough, but he had 22 on 6 of 10 from 3. 29 for Dragic, and then uh, 12 for Iguodala. So he didn't. He was a little banged up coming in, didn't play a lot. Uh, and then some of the younger guys, Kendrick and Hero, combined for 41. I, I would expect they'd be in pretty good condition. I also would expect with the season on the line, if Jalen Brown was close today, that we're probably going to see Jalen Brown on Tuesday. Right. So, I mean, that, that changes the equation a little bit. Yeah. If he's close, like, and if he doesn't play in that game, to me, that feels like Jalen Brown's not going to play until the playoffs come like uh, similar to like when we heard Oladipo wasn't making this flight for these two games, like to me, like, I feel like we're writing off the rest of the regular season and we'll see about the playoffs and you, I may eventually be proven mm. wrong. I just can't believe he may not come back, but uh, back to where, where we're heading here in terms of looking ahead. Um, I would expect that the full cast of characters will be available for Miami uh, Jalen Brown. I have a feeling he's not going to play, but even if he does, this team looks locked in the heat do in a way that I think that it would be um, business as usual. And as you look at the standings, um, you know, now New York is currently, as we're doing this podcast, playing the Clippers in, in, uh, mm -hmm. in an afternoon game. And if the Clippers can hold on to that game at home, uh, there'll be a three-way tie for four, five, and six. And I believe the way it'll shake out would mean Atlanta would move to four, Miami would be in five, and New York would be in six. Now that's pending, obviously, New York losing to the Clippers. A couple of things. One, this Heat team doesn't like prosperity. We've seen that all year long. Um, that would be one of my concerns going into Tuesday. We saw it in game today. We've seen it between games this season. They've had trouble beating teams twice in these two game sets. So that would be a bit of a concern. Another concern is the possibility of Jalen coming back. Um, that, that, you know, obviously changes the equation here a little bit, gives you another creator and defender that you've got to worry about. I, I do think, though, that that the the two day break should help them. Now I I don't know what Robert uh, Williams' status is going to be also because he played early today and then left with a turf toe. I'm I'm sorry. I just I've never been a Tristan Thompson guy. I don't I don't. He just doesn't give you enough. I, in fact, I thought Bam should have attacked him a little bit more today. Uh, I said it before this game. If you are who you think you are, if you think you're going to contend this year, you need a sweep up here. I mean, you need a sweep. And now you've beaten him once. And they're going to hear about it all day Monday on the talk shows. They're stuck up there in Boston. I'm talking about the Celtics, WEEI, and all the rest of this. There's going to be some Brad Stevens conversation over the next 48 hours. 
this all plays into the fact that the Heat need to handle business on Monday so that you don't have to worry – Tuesday, I'm sorry. You don't have to worry about who's Milwaukee going to use against you, who's Philadelphia going to use against you, okay, or that you get caught against, like, you know, a Detroit team with absolutely nothing to lose in that last game of the year with a bunch of young kids flying around. Like, you have to just close this thing out. Um, yeah. I'm more confident about it. I, the second half didn't worry me that much because I never felt like they were going to totally let it go. But this is a Heat team that does not – they just don't handle prosperity very well. We know that. And yeah, they, they can't rest on their laurels. Like Cooper Moore had just tweeted this, uh, that that was the first game that the Heat have won all season while while allowing an offensive rating of 120-plus. Mm -hmm. uh, they were pre previously 0 of 15 in those games. So what they allowed Boston to do offensively – uh, if Boston comes with that same game, the statistics tell us the Heat are going to get their ass kicked on Tuesday. So they they have some stuff to clean up, and I think that that's actually good because when you talk about the prosperity and the victory, um, I think that Spolster is going to be able to rely on film to ground them in more of the reality versus you know just getting a big win on the road like maybe you know we've kind of sensationalized. So hopefully that you know transpires on Tuesday night. And having been there many times, Boston is not a city you can really go out and pass 1 a.m. So they should be fine. Uh, it ain't Miami. So uh, so I, I think they'll be OK. All right. Thanks to our sponsors. As always, Miami Grill, therapistpreferred.com. Use that code five reasons. Everybody just keeps asking me, how do you get it? That's how you get it. Uh, it's it's pretty simple. So definitely do that. Of course, markbrownpa.com, M-A-R-C, brownpa.com. You need estate planning or $295 on that closing fee if you mention five reasons. Have a good afternoon. We'll be back on Monday.